Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of Paratalk. This episode, I'm flying solo. I've decided to pick a couple of my favourite ghost stories for you. I'm sure that you're aware by now, I do like a good ghost story. So, without further ado, welcome to Paratalk. March 17th, 1969. Our first strange encounter takes us to Heaton Norris, which is a suburb of the metropolitan borough of Stockport, Greater Manchester, England. It was around 4am in the morning when George Wilsall awoke needing to use the lavatory. In those days, most older homes, the toilets were situated outside of the house in a small brick building in the garden. As George turned to open the door to the outside toilet, he noticed something peculiar. In the clear moonlight, George could make out what appeared to be an incredibly tall figure standing under a large tree that separated his garden with his neighbour's garden. The figure appeared to be dressed in all black and it made only slight movements. George felt that whatever it was, it was aware of him. Getting no response, George then walked at pace towards the large dark figure which was still standing under the tree. As George was within a few steps of the figure, it suddenly vanished. George then returned to his house and armed himself with a heavy poker, returning to the garden in search of the figure who he believed had somehow eluded him. George searched the whole garden area but found no trace of anyone. That evening, George was sitting watching television with his wife. Their dog wanted to go out into the garden. George opened the door for the dog to go out, but almost instantly, the dog whimpered and ran back inside the house. Concerned, George closed and bolted the door. For the next few days, the dog was unusually skittish and not like itself. The dog also refused to go back into the garden. A few days later, George again came face to face with the figure. At around the same time as previous, George awoke and needed to make a trip to the outside toilet. This time, he was a little more apprehensive. After using the toilet and returning back to his house, George again saw the figure, but this time it was stood next to the neighbor's coal shed. George again called out, hoping for a response. But just like last time, there was no reply. He decided to confront the phantom once and for all. George started to walk towards the figure again, asking what it wanted. Just as George was a few feet away from the figure, it silently turned towards his neighbour's house and instantly vanished. The following day, George was given the sad news of the sudden death of his neighbour. George never got an answer to what he'd experienced. What baffled him was the size. George noted he'd never seen a person that tall in his entire life. The house in Province Street, Heaton Norris, was demolished in 1971. Was the spectre trying to convey a message of his neighbor's soon death? I guess we'll never know.
Hoy Lake, Merseyside. The old Royal Hotel that was built in 1797 facing the Irish Sea was reputed to be haunted by the ghost of a man in a Norfolk jacket, knickerbockers and a tweed cap. The proprietor at the time told of frequent reports of an appearance of an unidentified ghost in one particular wing of the hotel. One female staff member said she had several times seen a male figure in tweeds walk down the corridor from the hall to the ballroom and she described the figure as slight but eccentric and lively. Twice she followed the mysterious figure but each time it disappeared inexplicably. Looking back on the experiences she realized that she had not noticed any sound accompanying the apparition. A barman said he saw the figure answering the same description pass from the billiards room and disappeared along the corridor where the same form had been seen by a colleague. A maintenance joiner on the hotel staff said he saw many times a similar figure in the same room. Other apparent psychic disturbances at the old Royal Hotel include opening and closing of doors and unexplained footsteps. An old Hoy Lake superstition says that anyone finding a drowned body in the sea must ensure that it is given a Christian burial, for whoever puts such a body back into the sea will forever be haunted by the ghost of the drowned person. Now the clubhouse of Lancaster Golf Club, Jacobean Ashton Hall has seen sudden death and great unhappiness, frantic priests and anxious damsels, a ghostly white lady and a legend to account for it. It is said that long ago a jealous Lord of Ashton, before he set off for the wars, ordered that his lady was to be restrained in the tower of the hall until he returned, for he did not trust her to preserve her virtue. He was delayed, and when he arrived back at Ashton, his lady was dead. Thereafter, it is said, her mournful ghost has been seen walking around and round the tower, her prison that became her tomb, on windswept and moonlit nights.